In this video, I'm going to show how you can build an AI image restoration app using Bubble and Replicate. You'll see here I'm uploading a photo of a young Pete Sampras. The photo quality isn't great, you'll see it's quite grainy. But if I click on this submit button, we're going to kick off a workflow action and we end up with this output photo that's of a much higher quality. Before building any workflows in your Bubble Editor, you're going to need to register for an account on replicate.com. Please note you will need a GitHub account to sign into Replicate, so you may need to create that first. Once you have registered, you will then have access to the Replicate dashboard. Please note that Replicate is a paid service, so you will need to add funds via your credit or debit card in order to use it. And you can also use some of the models that are on Replicate and play around with them in the Replicate UI. For example, today we're going to be using the GFP GAN model. So if you type in GFP, it should be the first one that comes up here. You can see here it's a practical face restoration algorithm for old photos or AI generated faces. And like I said, you can actually play around with it on Replicate itself. So let's go back to our photos and upload our young Pete Sampras. You can see here we have a number of parameters. When we click submit, it's going to run that model. And you'll see from our output that we've got a much higher quality photo using that. Now, this is all very useful, but obviously we want to run this within our Bubble app itself. So what you're going to need to do is go back to your Bubble app, go to the plugins section, click on add plugins, and search for this plugin here, the Replicate AI and ML Models plugin, built by Cranford Tech, myself. It is a paid plugin, but once you have that installed, you're going to have access to a number of actions that we're going to use later on in this tutorial. After you have installed the plugin, you're going to need to do a bit of brief configuration. You can see there's a bunch of fields here. The ones we're concerned with here are the two API key dev fields. What you're going to want to do is, in the very first one, type in token. Then go back to your Replicate dashboard. And if you click on the drop-down menu here and click on API tokens, you're going to get a unique API token that you're then going to take and then copy into this field here after the word token and a space. Do the exact same thing with the second API key dev field and you're good to go. Okay, so you can see if we go back to replicate that we require a couple of inputs here for our image restoration model. We need an image, which we dropped in. We have version, which isn't gonna be relevant to our demo here today. And then we also have this rescaling factor where we can set bigger or smaller images as we like. So let's go to our bubble editor and start dropping in a few elements. Let's create a group. And we're going to call this group main container. We'll do some brief formatting to make it look a bit better. Make it a column. Set the min width as 300 and leave the max width unbounded. And we'll set the min height here to be 600. We'll also put some padding on the top, bottom, left, and right. And then we want to drop in an element that will allow us to upload an image, much like we did with our image on Replicate itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go and find the file uploader element. I'm going to drop that in. And I'm also going to drop in a drop down so we can choose the scaling factor. So let's go back up here and we can find our drop down element if we just searched in here, drop down, grab that, put that in there as well. We're going to set static choices for our dropdown. We're not going to put in a placeholder. We're going to put simply one, two, and three in for our demo purposes today. And we'll set the default value as two. So I want to put a bit of space between those two elements. So let's go to our container and apply some space in between them. And if we upload an image, we would like to see a preview of it beforehand, much like we have here. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab an image element. I'm going to put that in here. I'm going to set some dimensions on that, the min width to be 300, the max width to be 450, and then we're going to keep the aspect ratio fixed so it's always in a square style. We're going to move it up to the top of this particular group here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to display the image we upload in this uploader here in this image itself. So if we go back to appearance, click on dynamic image, and we put in file uploader A's value. Let's preview this. So you can see here we have our uploader, we have our dropdown, and we also have this blank area here where images are going to appear in a second. Let's go to our downloads and grab that picture of a young Pete Sampras. 
and you can see here image appears and it's quite low quality as we know we want to make this a bit better so now we're going to run the gfp GAN model in bubble itself or at least we're going to create the start of that process in bubble itself so i'm going to grab a button element and i'm going to drop that in our group as well and i'm going to say create prediction prediction is very much a replicate piece of language and it refers to all the various predictions you can see here on my dashboard using the different models you can see here this is a gfp gan one i've also used stable diffusion there recently they're the two models supported by the plugin at the moment but i will be adding a bunch more and what we're going to do is when we click that create prediction button we're going to go down to the plugin section here and we're going to click on create prediction gfp gan you'll see here we have two different parameters that we need to fill out the image url and then the scale value so what we're going to do for the image url is we're going to insert dynamic data we're going to say file uploader a's value and then this is really important we don't stop there we add on url at the end of it it's the image url we want not just the image itself and then for the scaling factor you can see here two is the default so we can set that to a different one if we want i'm going to set that as the drop downs value so let's refresh our bubble app let's once more upload a photo this time i'm going to go with a young federer rather than a young sampras and you can see here another quite grainy photo We'll leave the scaling factor as two and let's create that prediction. Now it may not look as though anything is happening here on the bubble end, but if we go to our replicate dashboard and just refresh that, you'll see here about 10 seconds ago, we actually did create a prediction via the API. It succeeded. And if we take a look at that prediction, you'll see we're getting the better photo of our young Roger Federer. So we've been able to create the prediction on replicate the key is to now get the output of this prediction, which is this better image here, back into our bubble app. And there's a couple of things we need to do to do that. The first thing we're going to do is go to our database and set up our database so that it can identify predictions and also get the output of those predictions and save it down. So we're going to create a new data type. I'm going to call it prediction. And I'm going to give it three custom fields. The first one is going to be ID, which is going to be a text field. The second one is going to be output and it's going to be image and we're also going to make it a list of images so we'll tick that box there and then third one is going to be a field called status another text one okay and if we now go back to our bubble editor and we look at the workflow that we're creating when we click that create prediction button we're creating the prediction in step one and then in step two what we're going to do is we're going to create a new thing that type of thing is going to be called a prediction because you know we're creating prediction here it's very much on replicate we haven't actually created a prediction in our bubble database just yet and we're going to set one field for now it's going to be the id and the id is going to be the result of step one it's id okay so let's just run that again quickly to show you how it works go to our young roger federer drop it in there and we'll create the prediction something's happening there in the background and if we go into our bubble database You'll see here we have a single prediction with a unique id that should match the id that's in our replicate dashboard let's just take a look at that to make sure i can see here this ends with a7iq and sure enough a7iq so we're correctly identifying the predictions that we're creating at the moment the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new page and we're going to call this prediction result and uh, we're going to not clone it from anything we'll just leave it like that I'm going to quickly set this to be a column and set the min width for the UI builder to be a bit bigger. And then I'm going to importantly go to the appearance section here. I'm going to set the type of content on this page to be prediction. Then what I'm going to do is when the page is loaded, I'm going to go down here to plugins. I'm going to run this replicate get prediction GFP GAN. So what I'm doing here is I'm running a workflow action that comes with the plugin and we're getting data from the prediction we've created we need to identify that prediction and we're going to identify it as current page predictions id so i think you might see where i'm going here we're creating a prediction id on the previous page we're actually going to navigate to this page send the data and then we're going to use this get prediction workflow to get the relevant data just so we can save down the relevant stuff in our bubble database i'm going to go to make changes to a thing the thing I'm going to change is the current page's prediction, and I'm going to say output add result of step one, its output. And then I'm also going to change the status, 
by saying result of step one, it's status. You can see there's a bunch of fields you could also put through if you would like, put that there. And that is how we're going to load in the image that we want to return back from the prediction. Now, let's go back here and do this one more time. And in fact, I forgot one crucial step and that's actually on our create prediction workflow, we then need to navigate to that result page. So let's go to prediction results and the data we're sending is a prediction that we're creating in step two. So let's see how this works. We're going to refresh that. We want to one more time drop in our photo. We're going to create a prediction and you can see here we're being navigated to the prediction result page and you can see here we're also getting the unique ID associated with that prediction. You may notice there's nothing else on the page. That doesn't look ideal and that would be true and if we go into our database you can see here at the moment the status is processing. We do not have any output so it doesn't look good overall and the reason is you might remember back in our dashboard and if we refresh this we should see a new one created. It takes some time to run it. You know it takes it looks here as though it took a second with a total runtime, which isn't a huge amount of time. Sometimes it can be longer, but Bubble loaded the result page before it got a chance to grab the actual prediction. Now, if we refresh it again, we're going to be running that get prediction workflow. And again, it looks as though nothing is happening, but in our database, you'll see here, and I think it was already showing up, we've added that image in, we've added a succeeded status, and we're getting the results we wanted. So what you could do then on the prediction result page is you could put in an image and make that equal current page predictions outputs first item and then if we refresh this one more time we should get our new and improved photo of Roger Federer coming in there just as we expected so this obviously isn't ideal in the sense you need to load the page twice to get the results so what you could do is if you feel confident in how long the prediction is going to take you could put in a pause here by searching for add a pause before next section. Make that equal to maybe 5,000 milliseconds. And then you should have enough time to load the image before the user gets too frustrated. Let's try it out one more time. We'll go to downloads and this time let's go for Pete Sampras again. So let's drop him in there. That's showing, we can create that prediction. You can see here there's a bit of a pause now because we've set that. That should hopefully give replicate time to make the prediction. And you can see here the image is loading straight away. That's the more straightforward way to get the prediction results, but that's not necessarily what you want. What you really probably want in a lot of cases is to have the resulting image upload on the same page that you put the initial image in on. So you'd ideally put the image in here and you get the result right here. That is possible, but it just takes a bit more work. And the way we're going to do it is the, when Replicate finishes making its prediction, we're going to get it to send a message to Bubble that they have done that and then upload the database automatically. In order to do this, you're going to need to go down to your settings tab and you're going to need to go to API and you're going to need to enable workflow API and backend workflows. Then if you go to the drop down menu up here, you'll see you have a new section called backend workflows. And if you click on click here to add a backend workflow and then choose new API workflow, you'll be able to create this here. We're going to call this API workflow get restored image. And they're going to tick these first two boxes. And then instead of having the parameter definition set to manual definition, we're going to click on detect request data. We're then going to click on detect data and we're getting this URL here. And this is really important because we're going to use this to initialize our webhook. There's a lot of services out there to make it very easy to initialize a webhook. Unfortunately, that's not the case with Replicate at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to use another service called Postman. It's free to sign up for Postman. You can do so by clicking there. I'm just going to sign in because I already have an account. And once you sign in, you may have a My Workspace set as default, or you may need to create a new one by clicking on Create New Workspace. But once you have that set up and click on it, you're going to be brought to this dashboard area here. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on New, and we're going to click on HTTP, and we're essentially going to trigger that webhook here in this case. We're going to change this get to be a post, and then we're going to paste in a URL, and that URL is going to be down in the description below, so you don't need to worry about typing it out. This is what we're going to do. This is the URL address that you're looking for. 
like I said, down in the description. And then we need to add in some authorization before we trigger this call. And what you're gonna do here is gonna click on, instead of inherit auth, you're going to go down to API key. And this is going to be very similar to what we did for our plugin section earlier. First of all, we're gonna type in authorization here. And then just like last time, we're gonna type in the word token, put in a space, and then paste in the API key that we get and replicate from this section here. I'm just going to do that myself now and skip forward for security reasons. And then the last thing we need to do is in the body section, we need to add some JSON. So I'm going to click on raw, and then I'm going to change this text to JSON. And again, I know we're getting kind of very close to actual coding here. I'm going to put in a link to the exact JSON that you need to put in. You only need to edit it slightly, but as you'll see in a second, it's very straightforward. So this is what the JSON is going to look like. It contains some details on the model you're running and also the inputs and outputs. But what is key is that we need to change this webhook completed URL. And what we need to change it to is this URL that has been spit out from the detecting request data screen in our bubble app. So let's copy that. Let's go back here and let's paste over what's inside there at the moment. You can see now we have our URL in and if we click send, we're gonna get this result back. And if we go back to our bubble app, you'll now see that we're getting all this data coming through, which is great. And this is the queue in here, it's the output. It's gonna be URL address to the image that has been delivered by Replicate. So let's save this down. We're only going to run this when request data's status is succeeded. This means that we're only gonna trigger this webhook when it's finished generating the image. And we can now make changes to the predictions in our database using this webhook. So let's go to data, make changes to a thing. The thing we're gonna change is do a search for predictions. And we wanna change the first prediction in our database. So we clicked on first item there, where the ID equals request data's ID. So we're searching through our bubble database, looking for the ID of all our predictions and matching it to the incoming prediction that has been sent by Replicate. And we're gonna change two fields. The first thing we're gonna change is the output. And we're going to simply add request data's output. And then the second one is going to be status equals request data's status. There's a bunch of other stuff you can add in if you want. That's really all you need. So there's one more crucial step we need to do before this is fully up and running. And that's if we go to our plugins tab and scroll down to the bottom here. You can see I have my tokens blurred out. But we want to put in our webhook URL in this field here as well. This is for the restore image. I might call it GFB again by the time this video is out, but that field. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back to Postman and the URL that we initially copied in, we're going to copy it again. But this time we're going to put it in here and we're going to get rid of the initialize at the end. That's really key. It will not work unless you get rid of initialize. Just a note on when you're deploying this to live, you're obviously going to need to put in your API keys in live mode as well, which will be up there. But you're also going to want to take this webhook URL, paste it in there, and then remove the version test and the forward slash. So let's test this out. Let's go back to our index page. And instead, this time, when we have this pause and go to page prediction results, we're going to delete those two workflow actions. And we're not going to add anything else in. So let's see how we get on. Okay, so we're going to our downloads. This time I'm going to add in a photo of a young Andre Agassi. So I'll drop that in there. You can see here, quite poor quality. Let's click on create prediction. And that's now gone true. If we look at our replicate dashboard and refresh that, we can see that was created seven seconds ago and decent enough quality difference. And then if we go back to our bubble database, we should see, if we refresh that, that is the latest one. You can see here we have the output. So I'll just click on C there. That is exactly what's matching inside there. And status has been succeeded. So our webhook was successful. So we're now getting data directly from Replicate. What we might do just to make it a bit better is if we put all of these elements here, in a column container and we get rid of nothing but let's copy this actually and let's paste it into the group again we now have two groups but we can get rid of this and this and this in the second group and if we go to the overall container and set it to be a row yeah we should see now that we have a second value here for the image and what we're going to do is 
we're going to go back to our workflow and just get the name of this group. It's called Group C. We're going to say we're creating the new prediction and then we're going to display data in a group of pop up. And what we're going to display in Group C is the prediction that we're creating in Step 2. And that's not working at the moment because we haven't set the type of data on this group to be prediction, but we will now. And you can see then we're displaying the data in that group. And what we're going to say on this image is it's going to be parent group predictions output. And then let's refresh our app one more time. I didn't quite like how that image looked last time. I'm going to set the scale down to just one for this. Uh, let's go to downloads again. We'll go back to Roger Federer. We'll create our prediction. It's been sent off to replicate. It's been created and you can see the output is popping up there. So that's it for this tutorial. Hope it's been useful. If you do have any questions, you can let me know in the comment section.